Welcome back. Let's work another example. Let's suppose we're asked to evaluate 2 minus i raised to the power of 3i. Now recall our definition of the complex exponential, uh, complex power function. z to the alpha is defined to be e raised to the alpha natural log of z. How will we then evaluate our uh, expression here? We'll take a minute, uh, try to think about how you'll do that. Pause the video, try to work this one out, and we'll come back in a second with an answer. All right, well, let's start um, by evaluating the expression, plugging in the two minus i and the three i into our formula for the definition. We'll put the uh, three i in, in front of the natural log, uh, or the uh, logarithm rather, of two minus i. And as before, in our previous video, we're going to just evaluate what the logarithm means. We have a formula for that. We uh, take the logarithm of the modulus of two minus i, plus i times the argument of that expression. And then to evaluate these things, the 2 minus i has a modulus of the square root of 5. The argument is not a nice number, so we'll just express it as an inverse tangent. And remember that the argument um, needs to include this plus 2k pi, because the argument could be any multiple of 2 pi plus this value. Now cleaning things up a little bit, uh, the 3i will multiply onto both these parts of the inside. 3i times i just creates a minus 3. So we'll times that onto both the inverse tangent and onto 2k pi. Uh, we'll also take a look at the square root inside of a logarithm. We can pull the power of 1 half out. And also the minus sign we can pull out in front of the inverse tangent. Those are just uh, basic properties of these functions. So we'll end up with an expression that looks like this. You'll notice that we have our exponent kind of broken up into the real part of the exponent and the imaginary part. And that will be useful when we evaluate the complex exponential. Remember the definition for that was simply uh, e raised to the modulus, the, sorry, the real part, e raised to the real part times cosine plus i sine of the uh, imaginary part. All right. So now as before, um, this expression is going to be multiple valued. k can be any integer. And as we plug in different values of k, this will affect the size of this uh, multiplying factor in front. As we uh, put in the first few values of, of k, you'll see that we get values that rapidly shrink in size as we increase the value of k. All right, well, that's it. Um, let me know in the comments below or send me an email if you have any questions.